Is I am first. Yes, you're first. Hello. <laughs> Welcome. It is 12. We'll get started in a bit. I'm just going to talk a little bit what we're going to be doing today. And just to quickly introduce myself. Hello. My name is Alyssa. I'm one of the cartooning and anime art teachers here at Wing Canvas. Um, let me change my screen. And I teach... Oh, I think I said that already. <laughs> I teach cartooning and anime as well as digital art classes here. And today we will be doing a Ghibli screen cap redraw. And I have some uh, 10 second thumbnails uh, that I have here already that I have planned out. And the last time I checked in the poll, um, Howl's Moving Castle one, which, which is great. <laughs> I I wanted to I wanted Howl's Moving Castle to win as well. But anyway, again, I we're going to get started with Howl's Moving Castle and then my goal for today is to actually get two screen cap redraws drawn. Um Hi party. Welcome. Welcome to anyone coming in. I'm just adjusting my tablet. Um I have a couple of screen cap thumbnails. And yeah, we'll be doing a Ghibli redraw. So I will um, get started. And of course, if you have any questions, let me know. I'll try my best to answer them. Any art related questions. There is a little bit of lag, however, so it might take some time to hear my answer. Um, is this Medibang? Yes, it is Medibang. So if you have any Medibang questions, um, I'll try my best to answer them. It's not my primary, my primary uh, program. I'm just going to pull up my reference image. I'm not going to show them on stream, but uh, yeah. I am looking at them on another monitor. So I just have some thumbnails on the side to uh, prep a little bit. And I'm gonna go over a little bit of blocking in coloring as well as how I would finish this time I gotta be fast it's true guys sorry I'm not Jesse <laughs> I can't go that fast I think I've mentioned it before but like um in the past I used to be pretty fast like um when I was younger um I'm trying to think of how to describe it like I would finish at least one piece of art a day like completely line arted cell shaded sometimes three things in a day and i would be really really fast <laughs> but not any not anymore and i don't really i don't really know why exactly i guess it's just because my uh also because my perspective when i draw i i think a lot more and i i've become a bit more of a perfectionist perfectionist if that's even possible <laughs> That's kind of my uh, explanation. I have a question. How can we make an animation? An animation in Medibang? I believe you can't. Yeah. So I'm going to do this one to get started, uh, where Howl is looking off to the side, and then Sophie is there. <laughs> She's just there. Um, in the thumbnail, her eyes are closed, but I'm going to make them open when I draw them. So let's see, I'm going to try my best to focus. And if you have any um, specific techniques you'd like me to go over, let me know. Since I am redrawing this in like my own style, I'll show you guys some of my personal techniques that I would do when I'm drawing something. Am I going to show my reference? I can actually. Uh, I won't leave it there forever, I have it kind of on the side, but I'll show what I'm working on. So this is the picture that I'm looking at. I don't know if I should have it on my canvas. Um, if you guys think I should have it on my canvas, let me know. I just feel like for um, for the future, <laughs> it would be it, it's it's better if I just leave it off of my page. But let me know. But next, I'm gonna draw Sophie. And I'm just sketching on the pen. Mm. 
Yeah, I like the screen cap. I wanted to do one where it shows uh, when they go to that old house that Howl shows her. I liked that one, but then I was like, hmm, background. <laughs> Not that it's a complicated background, but I just felt like, well, if I want to, if I want to do two screen caps, I should um, choose ones that aren't that aren't going to be extremely time consuming for me, at least. Oops, got to make sure free transform is off. And yeah, for anyone who is curious, I'm usually in the chat when when uh, Jesse is streaming. I couldn't make it. Well, I couldn't stay for a long time last week. <laughs> so I was teaching digital art, a digital art workshop. But yeah, I liked everyone's suggestions. Maybe not for everyone. I I agree. <laughs> I'm just thinking like, what's the best? Uh, sorry, I'm just adjusting my headphones. I'm just wondering what is the best thing to do for uh, editing purposes. <laughs> maybe maybe I'll pop it in. It's fine. I can also show you guys how to insert an image into Medibang. So I just pop in the file. Uh, hit Control uh, Control A to select all. Control C. Control V. So you can see how off my thumbnail is in comparison. <laughs> we don't really see Sophie's body, but. I think it helps to at least box in a little bit. I'm just gonna go really, try to go really quickly. <laughs> Jessie is here. I see her name. I, I know she's here. And usually in the sketching stage, I don't really worry about it looking extremely accurate. I just want to get all of the big shapes in and then I can fix it afterwards. Especially since it's digital art, it's very forgiving. So I'm not too worried about, about it. I'm always here, I'm ever present. Yes, I know. I know she is. I know you are, Jesse. Unless if you aren't, then. <laughs> So I am adding a little bit of extra movement to her dress because even though it is a screen cap redraw, it is with a little bit of my, well, it's supposed to be in my style. So like how I would approach drawing this scene. Oops, Medibang doesn't do that. I always forget. Jessica. <laughs> True. And then I can block in her arms. I'm actually not a huge fan of drawing um, hands like this because <laughs> they're so vague. Uh, I can move her arm back a little bit. Uh, 
How can we how can we animate in Medibang? Yeah, we can't do animations in Medibang, unfortunately. If you're looking for a free program that can handle animation, you might want to look into Krita. Other than that, all of the programs that I know personally support animation, um, they're all paid, such as Photoshop, Clip Studio. Those are the only programs, like drawing software, that I know can handle frames and animation and timing. I'm getting distracted. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to go fast. At least faster than how I usually would work. Block in her hand. She doesn't have her other hand showing. I feel like my drawing of Sophie is tilting a little bit, so I'm just gonna fix it. Ah, oh, Medibang doesn't do that always. <laughs> if anyone's curious what I'm doing, I'm hitting the arrow keys. Um, I'm hitting left and right because in most other programs, in most other programs, uh, it will it will do a m incremental movement, so it'll move your your drawing left or right by a few pixels. But in Medibang, it rotates your canvas, so it throws me off every single time. I'm already faster than the last time. Thank you. Thank you for the <laughs> thank you for the kind words. I'm always worried that I'm not going fast enough because I I don't finish a lot on stream. I'm the type of person who like when it comes to art, lately I always overthink. I'm not that fast. And it doesn't help that in Medibang, it doesn't come naturally to me. Medibang doesn't nudge. Yeah, no it doesn't. Unfortunately, because that's one of my uh, workflows, I always like to move things incrementally. But I can't do that here. Just read the, read the comments really quickly. Clip is good, Photoshop is not good at animating. Yeah, to be fair, I only know how to animate in Photoshop. I've, I've owned Clip for years, I think since like 2014, I've had Clip and I've never ever animated in Clip Studio. I've only animated in uh, Photoshop. And then, so even my uh, avatar that I made. So just so you guys know, the, the uh, animating capabilities that I have is just blinking. I can only make characters blink, that's it. I'm not going to add too much detail to her face yet. Because what I'm going to do is clean up the sketch afterwards, so I'm, I'm not too worried. And I remember Jessie mentioning this last time in her previous stream, because I did watch the replay to make sure that you're zoomed out. You don't want to zoom in too much or else you'll, you'll start to get tunnel vision. Which I am still guilty of from time to time, but as long as you're self-aware, that's already a step in the right direction. Pixel by pixel movement. Me, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I I draw with friends, like on, on a stream, like a personal stream. And then they would be like, ah, moving, his, his, his or her eyes are moving uh, pixel by pixel whenever I make movements like that. They would make a comment like that. It's also because I'm indecisive, but at the same time, I find that uh, moving things even just a little bit makes a, a world of difference. Even if it doesn't, it gives me, like, ease. It gives me ease mentally. It eases my mind <laughs> to know that, yes, I made a change, and yeah, it does look slightly better, even though it's not uh, a huge difference. We don't really see her feet, so... This 
speed comes with practice. Exactly. Yeah, for my case, I don't really know what it is because I used to be really fast, but no longer. Every time I wonder, will I ever be that fast again? Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> so I'm just looking at the thumbnail. However, my... The thumbnail that... Sorry, not the thumbnail. The drawing that I have compared to the reference drawing is not the exact same landscape measurement. So there will be... Some things will be off, but it's fine. And then I have Howl. A limited amount of time. Yeah. Yup. Maybe that's why, because I haven't done any life drawing or drawing for life drawing from life in a very, very long time. Maybe I can turn off my um nah. Nah, I'll leave my thumbnails there. Just so you guys can see like how chaotically I work. <laughs> it's not that chaotic, actually. It's fine. Looking at the size of their heads, I could always reference since it's digital art. Yeah, it's true. The whole lockdown is another thing. <laughs> kind of funny because when the lockdown first happened I was telling my friend huh because it was like around the time where a, a month or so passed and people were starting to freak out and I was telling my friend huh a few months is nothing lock me up for a year I'll be fine and then we are now nearing we are now approaching a year <laughs> so that comment didn't age well I like your dress better than your original thank you I feel like it's more effective to make those types of changes to add more movement because yeah it's a screen cap so it may have been like an in-between frame maybe her dress was moving but okay bye party thank you for joining So he has, um, his torso is kind of going this way. Mine is a little more exaggerated. I might knock that back as I work, but... I find that it's better to start exaggerated first and then, and then adjust it. That way, if you have like a certain flow or movement, um, you capture it first. Oh, none of his feet are showing. Interesting. <laughs> In any other regular picture, that would be a weird crop. But since it's a since it's a scene, I guess it's fine. Just gonna block out where his legs are. Hey, Runia. Oh yes, that is a very good question. Do you have any favorites from the Studio Ghibli films? Does anyone want to share their their favorite their favorite Ghibli film? Mine is actually Spirited Away. My favorite Ghibli movie is Spirited Away. Um, also, fun fact: I I watched a video on how to pronounce Ghibli, and it's Ghibli. For years, I've been saying Ghibli. So. <laughs> Just fun fact, in case anyone who's listening um, is like, that's not how you pronounce Ghibli. Well, I watched a video and they say Ghibli, so. <laughs> Hi, Soliha. Welcome. We're doing a Ghibli screen cap redraw. Spirit Away because you're basic? No, I like Spirit Away too. That's not basic. <laughs> I find that most people 
tend to, I don't, well, actually, I don't want to make any generalization, so I take it back. I'm not going to say anything. Um, but no, Spirited Away is such a good movie. Voted for Spirited Away. Very good. Yeah, it's my favorite film. It's also my first, the first Ghibli film I've ever watched. And I watched it when I was like seven. <laughs> and at the time, I did not understand it. I voted for Ponyo. True, Ponyo is very cute. I didn't watch Ponyo until later because uh, growing up, I've only watched, like growing up in my childhood, I've only watched Spirited Away and Princess Mononoke. And then afterwards, I decided, okay, well, I want to do a Ghibli movie marathon. And then I watched all of them. Well, not all of them, but most of them, like a good chunk of them. Kiki's delivery service. I wanted to put that in the poll too, but I maxed out at five five choices. Okay. Um see if I can speed up just a little bit more. I've always said Ghibli the other way. Me too. I've always said Ghibli for years. But then I watched the video, so don't take my word for it. <laughs> just just watch the video where it's showing like uh, Miyazaki himself and uh, the Ghibli staff members saying, well, the way they say it is with the J sound. So like, Gib I don't even want to say it because I'm going to butcher it so badly. But yeah, watch the video. <laughs> don't Don't take my word for it. Almost watched all of them. Yeah. And they never really get tiring because they're all so pretty to watch. One of my favorite ones is also Castle in the Sky. I like Castle in the Sky. And I also like Na Nausicaa. Nausicaa is like I believe it's kind of in the gray area because it's by, it's by Ghibli, it's considered a Ghibli film, but I think when they made it, it was like before they, they created the studio or something like that, but that's also a good movie. It is such a good movie. I feel like all Ghibli movies, at least the ones that are directed by Miyazaki are good. So they're not, let me see, I'm a little confused because my I have so many things going on here. So now I have this blocked out, I can turn off my thumbnails. Let me move him a little closer. <laughs> Arietti is also a good movie. So I feel like I made his chest like too pushed far back. So I'm just going to tilt it over. There we go. And then I can block out his clothing. Just very roughly. A little bit of his ears again i'm still at that stage where i'm like i just want to get something down on the page and then i can clean it up as i go this is pretty much how i work <laughs> 
trying to think of like other Ghibli movies that I really like. Has a little bit of his sleeve sticking out there. I think his legs are are like enough to be his pants. <laughs> I just need to add a little bit of uh, suggestions of clothing folds, and then I think that's fine. Just checking the time. We're at the thirty minute mark. Okay, I think from here I can start cleaning up, but. Um, if I do have time for a second movie, like a m second movie screen cap, let me know what movie you think it should be. I do have, uh, so the other thumbnails I made were of Kiki and, um, Chihiro from Spirited Away. I feel like I made his legs too long. I could try to fix that by making his torso bigger. I think that's a little better. I can block out his hair. And again, I'm not really like drawing it super detailed. Just just the shape. And then from here, I am you're late. You're not late. Don't worry. And of course, I also want to flip my canvas just in case there's anything I can fix that looks off on the on um, when I flip it. <laughs> I don't know that why that was so hard to say. Welcome, Em. So today we are doing a Ghibli scene redraw. And I am drawing Howl and Sophie because Howl's Moving Castle won in the poll. Or Paul, however you say it. <laughs> Oops. So I can make some quick fixes by using Mesh Transform. And... Oh, here it is. So here under column and row, you can create more boxes, more transformation boxes. And then do some quick fixes. And again, I'm doing this screen cap drawing in my style. It doesn't look like my style yet, but the way that I'll uh, color it in and I will do some digital painting. So if you have digital painting questions, let me know. Because I know I've mentioned it like several times on stream. I think I screwed up. Anyway, I can continue <laughs> that transformation. <laughs> Just hit OK and then try again. So this is like, um, hold on. If you ever use Photoshop, they have this powerful tool called Liquify, and this is the closest you can get on uh, Medibang. <laughs> on Medibang and Clip Studio, because both of those programs do not have Liquify, unfortunately. No idea about tra mesh transform. Yeah, it's super helpful. 
I find that it's the most effective during the sketching stage, like when you are blocking things out and then you want to make quick fixes and then you can uh, fix your sketch on top, like on a second layer. I should have included a before and after, but that's fine. <laughs> gonna read the questions for a bit. Oh, fixing my headphones. How have I been? I've been okay. I feel like lately I'm always okay. <laughs> like nothing, nothing uh, crazy. You had questions prepared? No problem. Hopefully they'll come back to you and I will be happy to answer them. Oops. Sorry, I was just adjusting my windows a little bit, but I'm just gonna liquefy. Sorry, not liquefy, mesh transform Sophie a little bit. IBS Paint has liquefy. Cool. I didn't know that. I've never used IBS Paint. I've heard good things about it. I'd like to move her forearm up more. So that's something I can keep in mind when I'm cleaning this up. Because I find that right now, uh, if, if her arm is just straight, it looks too flat. Again, the fact that Medibank doesn't have incremental movement throws me off, <laughs> but I'll get used to it eventually. I could block out where the clouds are. They're, they're not as important right now, but I could just to fill in the canvas and I'm just adding some squiggly lines and determining where, like which points where the clouds um touch on the characters so like here it's about halfway on his arm okay so this is where i start to see that my canvas is actually a little too large okay And then from here, I can clean up a little bit. And then at this point, what I'm going to do is deviate from the screen cap a little bit. So I'm not going to look at it as much. I'm just going to focus on making sure things look right to me. And then I also like to work on a, on a flipped canvas. Can add in an eye. Jessie exposing herself that she's winking. It's true. 
Is Jessica Jessie? Yes. Yes, she is. <laughs> I feel like Midibang hmm it's having some trouble <laughs> Thanks for following Show Show. Sorry if I butcher your name. If I ever do, feel free to just tell me how to pronounce your name. Your handle. And again, in the screen cap, her eyes are closed, but I'd like to make them open. Let me just name this layer clean. So if you purchase Clip Studio Paint, is it valid for a year? No, it is, you get to keep it forever. It's uh, something called perpetual licensing. So you buy it once and then that's it. At least for Windows or Mac. For other devices such as tablets or, uh, yeah, like the iPad, I'm not entirely sure. You'd have to check on the website. But I know for computer, on Windows and Mac, you get to keep it forever. I usually use Clip. I closed my reference. I should be looking at it. Why were you under that impression? Who knows? There's there's a lot of crazy like um a lot of crazy payment options when it comes to software. So I don't blame you. Just adding in her hair. The software is whack, indeed. As a digital artist, indeed. <laughs> Okay, and then again, constantly flipping. <laughs> and I find that the first drawing I made of her head isn't that good, so I'm just gonna reshape it a little bit in my clean drawing layer. Oops. Oh, my grid is really big. Just gonna adjust it. And then her hair is pulled back. 
Draw from your shoulder. What does draw from your shoulder mean? Oh, uh, well, I will try my best to describe it. It's basically drawing with a wider range of movement. So this is me drawing with my wrists. Like this is the full range of motion that I have with my wrists. Uh, you're drawing from that joint. But if I draw with my, oh, let me, let me keep that actually. But if I draw with my shoulder, that's my range of movement. Like I can, I can draw longer, longer strokes. Hopefully that explains it. Jesse, feel free to <laughs> add. I feel like it's that kind of thing that um, when someone physically shows you how to do it and then you try it yourself, it sticks with you rather than like verbal explanation. So her hair is pulled back into a braid. I think I said that already. <laughs> What did I say? <laughs> um, uh, basically, uh, hmm. just just the difference between uh, drawing from your shoulder, like what what people mean by drawing from your shoulder versus drawing from uh, your wrist, your elbow. I'm getting a little stumped. I'm... Never underestimate. The power of flipping true exactly that's why i do it because if i didn't flip um i wouldn't be able to see all of my mistakes okay i'm gonna try to kick up the speed just a little bit I keep saying that, but uh, I'm like working at the same speed. So my goal is actually at the halfway mark, so about at one o'clock. I'd like to have clean lines and then colors placed down, but we'll, we'll see. Drawing from your wrist limits your movement, and drawing from your whole arm allows for freedom of movement and better wrist health and arthritis prevention. True. I mentioned the first part, but the whole health thing is really important as well. I find that, of course, um, when you're zoomed in, it also plays a role. Like, the more I'm zoomed in, the more that I kind of force my hand to draw with my wrist, which isn't a good thing. <laughs> That's why I've been feeling the pain a lot more recently. Yeah, we're glad we could explain. I think Jesse explained it better though. Although I hope my uh, live demonstration helped. <laughs> helped you see it. Squiggly circle and smooth circle. Oh yes, and if you are familiar with Medibang's um, interface and stuff, and if you want to work in a cleaner interface, you can always hit tab to get rid of your interface. Yeah. And for drawing clothes, you can draw like a squiggle. 
this is like the the simplest way you could you could draw it there's a whole lot more involved but um simple you can draw a squiggle and then connect these lines to the point of tension or where all of the fabric is gathering So some say you should hold your pen or pencil a little bit away from the tip, like some space. Generally, yeah. I mean, I find um, that's more relevant to traditional drawing, like drawing on paper. But at the same time, um, hmm. I could be wrong, but I feel like it's an opinion thing or preference thing. Personally, if you see me holding my pencil, I'm holding it pretty close to the tip. That's that's just what's comfortable for me. And then um, I find with working digitally, it's a little more difficult because of how the uh, screen or the tablet reads the stylus. So I think there's uh, some limitation there, but... It depends on what you're doing. Yeah, it also depends on what you're doing. I find the most that I've I've drawn like um, holding a pencil properly, like um, the whole overhand holding your your pencil or your drawing drawing medium overhand is mostly with um, when I when I did life drawing. Now I'm lost. I'm like, what should I do with her dress? <laughs> I guess I could do something like that. It's fine. I can always fix it. You can tell when, when I draw personally or when I work in like quote my style, it's a lot of um, okay, let's draw something first and then <laughs> and then let's move on. Holding it close to the tip makes you press harder. Yeah, pretty much. Holding the pencil farther back makes it difficult to draw. It's true that it also takes time to get used to. But again, I feel like for me, like like Jesse said, it depends on the situation. And then I find that I, I apply that more when it comes to drawing on, on paper, especially doing bigger drawings, like uh, life drawings, or sorry, or when I was doing life drawing a lot more. So we just have a simple box for her hand. I'm not a fan of like fists, <laughs> drawing fists, because sometimes they're just unreadable. Especially depending on the position of the character. These are safe. Yep. Guilty of doing things right. Yeah. I find that while there is, you can say, correct ways to do things, at the same time, there are, like, hundreds of ways to do to get the same result of something right yeah guilting artists by using about using the airbrush yeah it's not cool <laughs> i feel like there's a time and place for everything
Yeah. As Jesse's saying, there's no right or wrong, just recommended and not recommended. And then I always find that when it comes to art techniques or um, methods of drawing, the best thing to do is to try it yourself. Try different techniques yourself and then see what works best for you. And then who knows? Um, the uh, technique, after you try a new technique, maybe the old technique you've been using, you're like, hey, this kind of sucks. <laughs> or... or uh, this isn't as good as I thought it was. I like this new technique. And then you just, you just learn. You just learn what works best for you. There are some, um... Hmm. Yeah, I don't really know how to word it. I guess like, like Jesse said, the best way to think about it is recommended and not recommended. She has a bow. Darn, at this rate, maybe I'll get like one good screen cap redraw. <laughs> we'll see. We're we have another 10 minutes. If I can line howl in uh 10 minutes. Sorry, not not line. This isn't lining. This is just cleaning up my sketch. I don't I don't really do line art, guys. I do line art sometimes, but uh not frequently. Howl, okay. I always like drawing face angles that are like slightly tilted up where you can see where you can see the nostrils. I don't know why <laughs> that sounded weird. That sounds weird when I say it like that, but cuz I like painting noses. So if I ever draw portraits, they're usually uh kind of facing upwards in a three-quarter view. <laughs> that's my that's my comfort zone. wondering how would I draw a howl in my style. I never actually uh, put much thought into it. Gold Pika, hi, hello. Welcome to those who are just now joining in. We are doing a Ghibli screen cap redraw and I am doing a scene from Howl's Moving Castle. I'm currently working on a flipped canvas, <laughs> just so you guys know. And I'm just adding in details. I'm cleaning up my sketch, actually. I'd like to do two, but... Uh, <laughs> we'll see. I keep saying that, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. It comes down to... Comes down to how much I overthink this. And I like giving everyone eyelashes, so... I have a little bit of indication of eyelashes. I also like having a bit of a sketch of a brow bone. Even if it doesn't show up in the actual image, in the actual finished image, I like having it there just so I know. I'm just gonna read comments for a bit. Shade with square brush with opacity by pressure on. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that response. I'm trying to think of what to say. That's why I sound so... <laughs> that's why I sound like that. Um, yeah. I like... I like seeing more... Uh, what is it? Variety in shading. Like, personally, I like having hard lines and soft lines. So I will use a mix. Hell's Moving Castle is one of my favorites. Nice. I know it's a lot of people's favorites, so I'm glad. I'm just gonna try drawing in his eyes. His irises, sorry. Because <laughs> I'm like, wait a second, I already drew in his eyes. What am I talking about? his irises, so the colored part of his eyes. Let 
of the canvas, see how that's going. Um, interesting. <laughs> I find that I drew his eyes a little too high, his features are too high. So, lasso, move it down. I feel like this eye can also be a little more tilted. It doesn't help that I didn't draw in his face first, but... <laughs> And then I can draw on his eyes. Sorry, <laughs> I keep saying I can draw on his eyes. My brain is like mal malfunctioning. I already drew in his eyes. I meant to say next I'm gonna draw on his mouth. So I can start by drawing the top. I can already sense I'm probably going to adjust this because he was looking a little goofy right now. And when I'm drawing smiles, I also like drawing a little bit of the sides, like the corners. It's more, it's more obvious when I'm painting, but I like having a little bit of a sketch of it. So Hal has a very uh, round, he has a rounder face. His jaw isn't that square, so maybe I'll, I'll adjust that to stay a little, a little true to the reference. live stream was randomly recommended we're so glad you joined well we're glad you're here i've always i i kept saying that my goal is to have two done but at the snail pace that i'm going at <laughs> i think i think that was a little too ambitious a girl crush <laughs> was this something that i said uh to be completely honest half the things i say i don't remember half the things that i say <laughs> when i'm when i'm streaming that's why that's why i said next i'm gonna draw on his eyes like 10 times when he only has one pair of eyes his ear i can't really see much of his other ear so i'll just have a little bit of uh of a hint of it. Turn off my sketch layer, see how that looks. And if I'm being honest, I don't think I've drawn like more than one character in a really long time, like in the same scene. So this, this is interesting. <laughs> And as some people know, I enjoy drawing necks. <laughs> Lighting. I'll, I'll show you guys 
how I would shade this. But the best way to think about shadows is the item that you're shading, think of it as a 3D object. And image ref. Image references are also great. But I feel like um, a quick tip for shading, shading from imagination is to pinpoint where your light source is coming from. And this is like basic shading, right? Which I will show you guys. If my light source is coming from here, which is like in this thumbnail, we can see the light source is coming from, from about here. So we can see this side of Howl and this side of Sophie is lit. But this side, the right side has, uh, that's where the shadows are. If you're talking about more realistic lighting, um, there are a lot more factors involved. Let me see how, his, how he's looking so far. Maybe I shouldn't make his neck super, super uh, different. <laughs> I'm debating. Nah, I'll keep it. It's my style, right? <laughs> so. Plus I can always change it after. And here I'm just gonna do a quick draw through of his uh, anatomy. You're approving of Howl's Neck. Well, thank you. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. <laughs> you love this movie. Nice to hear. If I'm... Uh, it's not my favorite movie. I like Howl's Moving Castle. My favorite movie is actually Spirited Away. But I do love Howl's Moving Castle. I think I love all Ghibli movies. We We talked about it, like, very briefly <laughs> a while ago about everyone's favorite Ghibli movies. Just gonna draw his shirt tucked in. And usually when I draw, I like having a mix of curved and geometric lines. I don't really lean towards one or the other. <laughs> same thing Same thing with my shading. Like I mentioned, I like hard shading and, and soft shading. <gasps> Someone mentioned The Wind Rises. Thank you. I love that movie too. It's, it's such a good movie. I was waiting, I was like, is someone gonna mention The Wind Rises? Because I love that movie, but it seems like not not a lot of people watched it compared to all of the, like, like the classics, right? The bus stop scene from Totoro. I'm sorry. Again, um, I think this is gonna be pushing it, but if I can fit in another screen cap, I'll try my best. Like, I, I really wanted to do more than one screen cap because I feel like working on one for the whole stream is a little uh, stale, but sometimes you take what you can get. Haven't watched The Wind Rises. You gotta, yeah, soon. At this rate, I'm waiting for Jesse to watch like a whole list of things. So this intersection point is a little weird looking, so I'm gonna fix that. Yeah, it's pretty different. 
the overall vibe. I also like it. I find that it's more realistic. Yeah, it's pretty realistic. I find that another movie that is a bit more realistic, but cuter is... What is it called? Darn. The title has escaped me. I don't know if it's, um... No. Let me think about it. I just I just remember that the, the the main character, the girl, she's I think she's writing a a story. And then there's a guy who plays the violin. I can't remember what it's called. And then hmm. And then that cat from The Cat Returns is also there. Not Grave of the Fireflies. No, I didn't watch that because I was too afraid I'm going to get too sad. I might watch it, but like, if it gets too sad, then... Uh... <laughs> I can't remember the title. I, I'm, I'm mistaking it. I'm mistaking it for for from up on poppy hill but that's a different movie it's also cute but not the movie that i'm thinking of the girl is a writer and the guy plays the violin ah uh, i have to search up search up list of ghibli movies <laughs> Grave of Fireflies made me cry. Exactly, that's why I'm hesitating. I'm really trying to think. Oh, it's a, it's a cute movie. Is it Ghibli or Ghibli? Are you asking about the pronunciation? I also talked about this. <laughs> I also talked about it. Oh, Whisper of the Heart. Yeah, it's Whisper of the Heart. It's a cute movie. Ah, Medibang doesn't do that. So, to reiterate myself, I say Ghibli. I've been saying Ghibli for years, but I watched a film, sorry, not a film. I watched a YouTube video explaining how to pronounce Ghibli. So, and they and it and it shows Miyazaki and and uh, other Ghibli staff members pronouncing it as Ghibli. Of course, they say it a little differently, but it's with that J sound. So thus, I have changed. <laughs> you just joined. Sorry, no, no need to apologize. I, I was prepared for this. I was prepared for, for anyone asking, like, um, how to pronounce Ghibli or calling me out on how I pronounce it. So I'm like, I have evidence, guys. <laughs> don't, don't take my word for it. Uh, look up the video yourself. Because before, in, in one of my classes, I, I had a student who who was so adamant and, and telling me like, it's pronounced Ghibli, you're wrong. And I'm like, okay, it's, it's fair if you think like that, but I watched this video. So <laughs> that, and I've also been saying Ghibli for like the longest time. I've only started saying Ghibli um, not too long ago. So his head's looking a little small, but I'll try to fix that with uh, some volume in his hair. Yeah. Am I a teacher? Yes. 
here at Wing Canvas, Jesse and I are teachers, instructors, So our streams are like our um, free accessible content for those who aren't able to join our classes. It looks like his hair is tucked behind his ear. Yes, Arunia is going to start streaming, I think, next week. Both Arunia and Faye. You thought this was my channel? No, 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 no. <laughs> there, there, there are tons of people. Meaning, uh, we have a team behind this channel. I am merely a spec. I am merely a spec in our team. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I was gonna say a speck in the universe, but... <laughs> I think if I ever had, like, my own YouTube channel, it would be nowhere near this organized. What do you think about traditional versus digital? I like the concept of digital, but I feel digital drawing doesn't feel okay. Well, oops, I accidentally pressed something, darn. Okay, <laughs> me getting used to Medibang. Well, hmm, feel free to discuss traditional and digital. I don't think there's anything wrong with digital art because um, you're not, what is it? The computer is not doing all the work for you. You still need to understand fundamentals of drawing. And I find that most digital artists, at least um, the ones that I know, they all have a traditional background or experience drawing traditionally. And then digital art is, is, is uh, you can think of it as another medium, just like how, oh, you like, you like drawing more than painting. It's the same, it's the same idea to me. It's like you're you're using a different material or different means of drawing something. It doesn't invalidate um, the worth of like, oh, is it actually art? Feel free to add anything, Jesse. <laughs> Traditional art versus digital art. However, I do feel like, yes, you can learn foundations and stuff digitally. I find that it's the most effective when drawing traditionally. It's also a matter of taste and preference because I know everyone learns differently, but I do think it's important to have some some traditional background. That might change in a few years, but we'll see. For now, I, 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 uh, I agree with what I'm saying. <laughs> Digital takes a while to get used to, but then you get the hang of it, which is more traditional. Yes, I sorry, uh, more convenient than traditional art. Yeah, that's definitely another factor. It's also more cost effective in the long run. If that's like something you're you're concerned about. Whenever I look at Howl's hairstyle, I can't like, I can't not think of He Man. <laughs> I try not to, but fun fact, that's what I think about when I draw this hairstyle. <laughs> Whatever I do looks better in traditional. Well, the thing is that I was exactly the same. Uh, when I first started with digital art, so fun story, when I first ever got my tablet, I tried digital art. I hated it so much that I packed up my tablet and I 
kept it in a closet for like two years and then I came back to it and I actually tried practicing um, digital art I tried making things simpler for myself and then I, I kind of got the hang of it So what I mean by starting simple is that when you when you first start with digital art, don't feel pressured to do things 100% uh, digitally because digital art is a mix of, yes, you need to know your art foundation, so you do need to have some knowledge drawing, but at the same time, you have to know how to use the program. So it's like you're, you're juggling two things. The only difference is that when it comes to traditional... I can't talk. Traditional art. <laughs> when it comes to traditional art, you've... I feel like, I think Jesse has mentioned this before, but you've been using like a pencil your whole life. So it comes a bit more naturally, but when you're drawing digitally, it's, it's like, it's another learning curve. Man, I feel like whenever I stream, it's just me trying to talk. Me trying to talk and being unable to talk properly. <laughs> but yeah, um, feel free to uh, ask any more additional questions, or if that helped. First digital drawing was a potato with an anime face on it. Perfect, perfect start. Because I find that one, one thing that um, really helped me get started with digital art is scanning in my drawings first, like my traditional drawings, and then coloring them digitally. So that's more like uh, an introductory way to learn digital art because uh, you already have the drawing, you just need to color it in. And it lets you, it allows you to learn the program a bit more, a bit less stressfully because <laughs> you don't have to learn how, how to actually draw in it yet or, or other things. You can tackle certain aspects of digital art one at a time. Was the shaky half body of a Pokemon character that you didn't? True, true, true. I see some more people popping in. So for anyone who doesn't know what we're doing today, we are doing a screen cap, Ghibli screen cap drawing, and I'm doing Howl's Moving Castle, a scene from Howl's Moving Castle because the movie won the poll. Paul. I keep giving like two different pronunciations because <laughs> I don't know what's correct. So I have the scene of Howl and Sophie on the hill. I think this is like the end of the movie. <laughs> so I'll draw on his other arm. We can't really s his see his shoulder. I'll just add a little bit because it makes more sense to me. There are quite a lot of comments, so if you ever really want me to answer something and I missed it, just feel free to repeat or reiterate your comment. But yeah, I see a lot of clip in the comments. Clip is a whole other science. True. The thing with clip is that I find Clip Studio is more suited to um, artists who have some experience with prior software like they've used digital software before because a lot of digital art tools are common across different software but i don't think clip studio is that user friendly just because it has so much going on for a beginner however it is not impossible to learn it if you've never used a digital art program before we do have a uh, clip studio tutorial that i kind of did voiced over you can say <laughs> that i went over it's quite lengthy but i always say this it's it's packed with facts only i promise it's only facts because if 
it just goes to show how much there is to cover in Clip Studio, and I didn't even cover everything. But I think it's a good intro introduction. Because when I first got Clip Studio, I had no idea what I was doing. And I had some experience in Photoshop already. <laughs> But to be fair, learning from uh, several years ago is also a little different from learning in today's uh, in in today's recent years. I find uh, tutorials, education, of course, as years go by, more tutorials become available, and then education is more accessible, and it's easier to learn if you're willing to try to learn yourself. Can't really see his other arm. I'm trying to, like, avoid getting a tangent. I think that's fine. That's fine. A lot of me drawing is also just going, drawing something and saying, I'm not sure about that, but it's fine. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Comments. Two plus layers in my computer goes poof. True. Um... When I used to work on just a laptop, like a dinky old laptop, it was like that. Clip and Photoshop are similar in a lot of ways, but Photoshop is more editor friendly, photo editor friendly. Oh, I can't talk. <laughs> While Clip is more illustrator friendly. True, that's a good way to describe it. Yeah. The thing is that when I first started into digital art, I think Photoshop was like the only program that I knew that you could draw in it. Also because my first exposure to digital art was like a photo tutorial by by an artist. And then she used Photoshop, so I was like, hey, I want to use Photoshop. <laughs> by the way, I might try that coloring in digital and like with the traditional drawing? Yeah. I find that it definitely helps because at least you can also play around with the blending modes as well as layers. And then once you're ready to actually draw in the program, then you'll have some experience already rather than just like jumping into a program and say, um, you've never ever drawn digitally before. It can be more daunting. But yeah, have fun with that. I hope it goes well. I don't really have a sketch for his hand, so I'm just kinda... Oh, more fists. I don't, ugh, I don't like fists. <laughs> They're just so, they, they can be so unreadable sometimes. I like more, more dynamic hand poses because you can clearly tell what the hand is doing, but when your hand is in a fist, the silhouette is kind of just blah, right? It's kind of just a, a box. Fine, I'll try to stay true to the reference. Time lapse. True. I like the time lapse feature in Clip Studio. I don't really use it because I'm not one to. Well, I want to use it, but I'm not really the type of person who enjoys recording my work because <laughs> I feel like I'm constantly being watched. The only exception is if I'm asked to do it for like work. I think that's fine for now. It does look like I only gave him f four fingers, but uh... let me fix that. Try to fix that real quick. Just add in a second, an extra knuckle over there. So Hal can have all five fingers. <laughs> I can also continue to fix this in the painting stage, so um, I'm trying not to get too hung up about this. Oh, 
Fine. That's fine. I don't like that. That's fine. Okay. I'm streaming my work. True. Because it's, it's work. That's the thing. But it's like... Um, I don't know. Uh, this isn't my personal art, right? It's different. The concept is a little different. Also, like I said, the only exception is when I'm asked to do it. So it's not like I would be doing this um, on my own. Yeah. We're opposites when it comes to streaming, exactly. <laughs> opposites in general, because Jesse is a more of an extrovert. I am not. <laughs> I'm I'm probably one of the most introverted people you can meet. Sorry for the pause, I was just adjusting something. Okay, well, the lines for the characters are done. I can just add um, a little bit of texture for, for grass, and then I can start coloring. Uh, just a time check, it is 1.30, almost 1.30. And yeah, I think uh, um, aiming to get two screen caps done was a little too ambitious for me. Because I was thinking of like, okay, well, they don't have to be finished. I could just make them like uh, color blockings and stuff. But I realized my mind won't let me do that. So one screen cap it is. <laughs> but hey, this is probably the cleanest uh, sketch you'll see me do. <laughs> compared to previous streams. And then I like to copy my line art, go to blur, Gaussian blur, and then add a little bit. Oh, in Medibang, you can only do Gaussian blur. There's no other types of blurs. And then I knock back the opacity, the layer opacity a bit. So that way it makes my line art darker, but not uh, overwhelmingly dark. Again, personal preference. This is a drawing in my style, so I'm using techniques that I would go about using. Just read the comments really quickly. Ah, talking about tablets. Yeah, as Jesse mentioned, she uses a Cintiq. I use, um, I can't remember the exact model, but it's a Huon GT920 2, I don't know. Um I just or 21. I just remember that 21 is referring to the how big it is. So my tablet is about 21 inches. It's about 19 inches of screen space actually. But uh yeah. I think it's pretty good. We do have a blog dedicated to different kinds of drawing tablets and uh, which staff member uses what. So feel free to check that out. I think it's in the description. <laughs> um, yes, I also like to add a little bit of shadows in my line art. Just like the major ones, like under the neck and so on. And then I can darken up any other areas. Let me see. What about pencils? <laughs> any pencil people here? Okay, so fun fact. I'm one of those people, one of those artists who uses uh, only mechanical pencils. Unless if I were doing like a, a absolutely... Um, how should I say it? I don't want to say fine art because I, I, I can't classify myself as a fine artist. I find that would be offensive to actual fine artists. 
<laughs> but when I do like more, I guess you can say serious, serious drawings, serious traditional drawings, I will tend to use the whole range of uh, different pencils. But when I'm drawing for fun, I'll, I'll use a mechanical pencil because that's what I'm comfortable with. I also like pointy, pointy, sharp, clean lines. Yeah, Jesse, mechanical pencil person, mechanical pencil gang. <laughs> We're out here. That and I also have a, uh, so I use a point, I also use a point zero, a point two, I think a point two or a point three mechanical pencil because I enjoy my, my sharp lines. Okay, I think we can move on to color. So uh, let me organize my layers a bit because I have quite a few from like um, previous stuff. So I have the thumbnail. Let me just name it thumb. My other thumbnails. Sorry, that's my reference. Ref thumbnails. I'm just going to keep close. Uh, and yeah. So I set my clean layer to multiply. And then I can start adding in colors. I'm going to try to eyeball these colors, but uh, just a heads up, guys. Don't be afraid to color pick, like... If you're working digitally and you have the power to color pick, there's nothing really wrong with it. Plus, you can also color pick as a start and then add your your own spin to it. That's what I might do, because uh, kind of on a time crunch here. Oops. Let me move the reference up there. And then I fill it in. When I use 0.5, it breaks every two seconds. True. I feel like it's also something that you get used to. So I'm just going to block in my colors. I'm not going to um, be too crazy about it. Let me just color pick. Because again, I am here to tell you guys there's nothing wrong with color picking. <laughs> it, well, it depends on the situation. I keep hitting the letter P as a shortcut because in Clip Studio, the uh, pen tool is the letter P. I'm just starting with color picked colors and then I can make adjustments later. Oops. Reference the layer, man. Why isn't that the default? <laughs> Folders for layers. Yeah. The thing is that sometimes I name them, sometimes I don't. <laughs> sometimes I just like, I, I genuinely forget. Like I honestly just forget. It also depends on what I'm drawing. If it's a more complex and I really need to know each layer, then I'll, I'll be more diligent when it comes to naming. I should have made like a base layer, a base color layer, and just clipped all the colors to it, but hmm. Brain is full right now. <laughs> I 
I'm doing great, thank you. What's the point of digital if I can't use 99 plus layers? There, there are two kinds of artists. I'm reading that comment while I'm thinking of Jesse. Oh, why do you pain me, magic wand tool? Ah. Too many layers. Yeah, I don't know how many... I don't know how many layers I use, actually. It depends on the situation. Sometimes I'll use... Um, definitely less... Less than... Less than 10? Sometimes... It really depends on what I'm working on. Sometimes I'll end up using more. But one thing I don't like about when I use too many layers is that it gives me unnecessary amounts of lag. So usually I'd have to merge everything anyway, uh, just to avoid that lag. Because usually as digital artists, we don't like waiting. Like like we we like being uh, more efficient and faster. So having to wait is a little. Uh, oops. Ah, uh, I forgot you can't just delete. Watching me stream in Medibang is also just me discovering how to use Medibang properly. <laughs> I'm on the eraser tool. Am I? Okay. Got it. That's what the lasso is for. True. <laughs> Bucket, magic wand. That's what I do. I'm trying to read the comments. It's just going by kind of speedy. Gold Pika, I gotta go. Bye. Thank you for joining. What application am I using? I'm using Medibang Paint. Medibang Paint Pro. Yep. And yeah, that's the end of the comments. <laughs> I'm trying to keep up. I'm trying to keep up while hopefully finishing this. I might go over the two hour mark, we'll see. I wanna at least get some simple shading done cause I'd like to go over that. This is also my mistake for again, not creating a base color layer and clipping everything. That's how I usually work, but my my brain malfunctioned, so um, I'm kind of just going with what I have right now. So what I'm doing is just creating an outline, magic wand, insert. For anyone who doesn't know the shortcut for the bucket tool function, so not the bucket tool itself, but the function to fill in something with color is the insert key. I've also programmed uh, my clip shortcuts to do that as well. Let's see. Question. My head is going for and I don't understand anything. <laughs> True. Draw with a trackpad or mouse. I'm using a digital drawing tablet. Yeah. Good luck with the clouds without a cloud brush. Um. I'm actually fine without a cloud brush. However, that is in Photoshop and Clip. Medibang, I have no idea how this is gonna go, but we'll see. <laughs> I've rendered in Medibang before and it's been okay, but um, I'm always hesitant because it's not my program of choice. Hair. Howl's hair is a little blue. It has some blue tint to it. Oh, 
Wrong layer. Sorry, not wrong layer. I just put it in the wrong stack. I could also just um, fill in this area with his eyebrows and then on the skin layer, I can erase. Sophie's hair, it's gray. But yeah, for anyone who is just tuning in, feel free to let me know what your favorite uh, Ghibli film is. We'd love to know. Since it is Ghibli, f uh, Ghibli themed. Erase some parts of her dress that I've accidentally colored in. Can you tell how to use the lasso tool? Well, in Medibang, the shortcut is L, and I tend to use it to fill in areas like, like this. So that's her bow, right? Let me just fill it with color for now. And the color is like a burgundy red. I feel like that's too red. Let's make it more desaturated. Okay. And then some other details on her dress I can worry about later. But, um, let me see. Let me see. So, when you're saying how to use the lasso tool, can you specify like what what part of the lasso tool that you don't understand? We do have two Medibang tutorial videos, both done by Jesse. So if you'd like to check those out, especially if you're just getting started. Oh, she has buttons, but I'm just gonna say you can't see it from here. <laughs> Ultimate uh, shortcuts. I'm actually fine with these colors, so um. Uh, let's just merge them. Whatever. It's fine. Green. Just color pick some green. I'll make it a little more desaturated. I'm gonna protect alpha on this layer, and then I'm going to use the airbrush to light in one area. That's the wrong color. <laughs> oh, eraser tool. gotta go well thank you for joining hopefully we'll see you next time have a good one bye did i alpha lock that yeah yes i did <laughs> second guessing myself just another time check we're at the 15 minute mark like 15 minutes left but um i'm gonna keep going i'm just gonna try my best to reach a point that I'm happy with to end on. Ah. Uh, so I'm not a fan of the brush size restriction in uh, Medibang as well as Clip Studio. I believe they have a um, brush size restriction. It's only Photoshop that I can think of where you can uh, kind of size up the brush as big as you want. 
just going to add some blur. Like a really high blur, probably like maximum blur. And then I shall transform this so I get a more smooth transition. That's still kind of harsh. Um, so I'm going to knock back the opacity. And then I think the clouds are going to play a pretty big role in making the side of Howl look brighter. I'm just going to block in the clouds, but I'm not going to um, render render them. And I'm just using the acrylic brush, but at this point, it doesn't really matter because <laughs> it's so opaque. It just looks like one, one big shape. Didn't I say I wanted to do two redraws? I did indeed. However, my hands won't let me, so... <laughs> So I'm kind of taking what I can get, which is probably one finished redraw versus two. I did warn you guys um, that it is all under circumstance because I'm not, not that speedy. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, ideally I'd like to do two. However, if I can't do it, I'm not going to force myself because it would be impossible to do within the time frame. <laughs> So I have this cloud, I think it's a little too light, so what I'm going to do is knock back the brightness a little bit, and I do that by opening my Hue Saturation Palette, Control u Make it just a little darker, I want to add a clipping layer and then uh, add a bit of this cloud's shadows. And again guys, I'm not rendering this cloud, I just want to have a cloud. <laughs> For now, I'll, I'll try to render it a bit more later, but within the time frame. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Just so it's not so harsh. Oh, I hit cancel, oops. Comics. Sorry, I mean comments. <laughs> Use the G pen, it's faster. Well, yeah. I got nothing else to say to that other than, yeah. I'm going to knock back the saturation on this shadow as well. Sorry, the brightness and saturation, just a little bit, and then I can knock back the uh, layer opacity. I can merge that together. And then that's fine. Um, it looks great, thank you. <laughs> Let me see, so what color are Howl's eyes? They're kind of blue. I'm just gonna color in the whites of the eyes. If Howl's eyes aren't blue, let me know. I'm I'm just looking at the uh, picture and they look blue. 
from from what I can see or like grayish blue, but if I'm wrong, let me know. I'll change it. And then his mouth. In the screen cap, it's a little dark, so I'm just going to lighten that up quite a bit. I prefer, I, I prefer, <laughs> I can't talk. I prefer giving my characters teeth when their mouth is open because it, it starts to look a little gummy when they don't have any teeth. So we'll see. I might render in some teeth for him, but... Let me just give him his uh, anime mouth. And then what, what color are Sophie's eyes? I'm gonna guess brown. Do I have an Instagram? The thing is that I don't use it. I'm guessing her eyes are brown, right? Ooh, that's really dark. Well, this is a good time to mention, if you want to see more of our art, feel free to join us on Discord, and then we can, we can share. We can share our work there. And of course, if you haven't already, um, like and subscribe. I don't know where my prompt went. <laughs> it disappeared, but anyways. <laughs> but anyway, um, when you mention rendering, is it in regards to detail and depth? Yeah, it's kind of like, uh, think of how, how you would start painting. Rendering, I find, is mostly... Um, mostly used in regards to digital art but it's the same idea it's rendering like painting more of a painterly look okay so let's go for uh, let's go a bit over the time because i want to at least go over some shading so what i'm going to do is create a new folder pop everything in there and then now everything's in the same folder. And then the way that, oops, <laughs> I'm trying to create a new layer. Uh, so what I'm going to do is fill this in with a shading color. I, I like to work in this like violet range when I shade. And then I just hit, hmm. Is clipping like not not a thing? I feel like Jessie may have mentioned this and I maybe have totally blocked this out because I did watch her um, her uh, live stream replay and I vaguely remember hearing about it but I was also watching it just to see her draw Leon so like because <laughs> I missed it. I was only there in the beginning. Put your social medias in the video description. We We do. We do have. It's just uh, many people do not read the description anyway. <laughs> okay. Um, can you put a mask? No. If you can, I don't know how to do it. So I'm going to have to do this destructively. <laughs> Usually, okay. So I'm, I'm going to determine my light source. So my light source is um, coming from the left. Let me change the color a little bit. So now... This is how I shade, and then I'll talk a little bit about rendering if we have time. I'm just going to knock back the saturation because it's a little too colorful. And then if my light source is coming from the left, again, everything on this side and this side will be lit. And on the other side, it will be in shadow. So I'll start by uh, bringing the figures into light. So I like to lasso where the... Um, where the light hits, and then I just erase it. Huh. 
I, I really want to use the delete button because that's how I get rid of my shadows. But Medibang won't let me do that. So actually, let me just use the eraser, eraser tool. Yeah, the stream ends soon. We'll, we'll see. What I'm trying to cover mostly right now is just uh, adding shadows. Like the way that I add shadows is actually, um, you can say reversed. What I do is I put a shadow layer over everything and then I start to carve away at the lights. Like I'll start to put in areas where light will be hitting the face and the character. And then ideally I work in a mask because if I work in a mask, I can alternate between adding shadows and then, uh, sorry, erasing shadows and then bringing back my shadows. Or Jesse, you can let me know, does Medibang have mask? <laughs> uh, mask are the, uh, you know, like, like the black rectangle with the, with the white circle in it or vice versa. I can't remember exactly what it looks like. But that's how I work in uh, Clip Studio and Photoshop. I work with mask. Because it is uh, more non-destructive. But again, if Medibang doesn't have it, it's fine. I'll work with what I have. I love my mask because it's so non-destructive. This is this is destructive. If you guys don't know what what uh, destructive and non-destructive means, it's basically uh, destructive is once you do something, you can't undo and go back to your original state. However, with um, mask, it's very easy to make edits. That was a terrible explanation, but I I do hope you understand it. <laughs> I just want to say you're amazing. If that was directed to me, thank you. If that was directed to Jesse. Also, great. <laughs> so I'm just going to add some lights here to his arm. And then again, I am just focusing on the basic shape. That's how I approach shading. And with the eraser, I can use um, the soft eraser or an airbrush. And then Jesse goes over this. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Thank you, Pardeep. So I guess my goal for today is to just block in all of the lights and then go, because it's already two o'clock. I cringed looking at the clock. <laughs> I took 10 damage, as, <laughs> uh, as some would say. So that light is a little too intense, so I just knock that back a bit. And then I can add some light to his arm. His knuckles. And at this stage, I'm really just blocking out the lights. I won't get to rendering, unfortunately. I totally overestimated my speed once again. <laughs> so here with the cooling folds, I can block out. Um, this is where the light will be hitting. And then I can erase that. 2 a.m. or 2 p.m. It is 2 p.m., not 2 a.m. If it was 2 a.m., I would be elsewhere. I was about to say I would be sleeping, but that's unlikely. Oops, I 
brought my curves tool by accident. Okay. And then I'm going to add some light to his other leg where it will be hitting. So question for Jesse, how much time did you go over last week? I can't remember. I, I'm trying to gauge like how, how much longer I should be going. Like 15 minutes? Okay, um, let's see how far I can get by 2.15. So here I'm just gonna shade, I'm gonna select all the parts of Sophie that would be lit. And I'm just gonna do a rough block in. I keep saying that, but it is a rough block in. There's no other way for me to describe it. What did I? Oh. Some parts of her braid will be hit by the light, but not much. Her face here. Oh, I should look at the reference. Because I feel like when I tend to add lighting to my characters, I make it a little more dramatic too. When it shouldn't be. Keep hitting control M by accident. <laughs> and some highlights for the hair. For anyone who is curious on a more in-depth hair tutorial, we do have one that you can check out. I'm kind of like just glossing over it, but my, my technique stays the same. I used the lasso tool and then I erased to answer M's question, how did I... Uh, shade his pants. I use, I lasso, I lasso the shape of the light and then I erase it. So again, just a recap, the way that I shade is a little different because I, I shade kind of a in a reverse way where I, I don't put in the shadows. Well, I will put in a few shadows here and there, but I start with an overall shadow and then I, I uh, put in the light. I feel like it's just a more refreshing way for me to shade. Uh, that doesn't make sense, I'll get rid of it. Yeah, it's a more refreshing way for me to work because when I first learned uh, how to do that, I actually learned this technique from a webtoon artist uh, whose art I, I like really, really, really... That's, that's terrible grammar, I was gonna say really much, I, that I like a lot. So I learned that from him. Um, and yeah, it's been uh, years since I've used this technique. So here I'm just like blocking out parts of light on the grass. I'm not really uh, too worried about how it's looking. I find that adding these geometric patches of light will also create more visual interest. I'm on the wrong layer. There, oh, no, 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 no. Airbrush, where's my airbrush? There we go. I need that smooth um, brush. 
and then I can erase that just a little bit. That should be having better quality than mine. No, don't say that. <laughs> I'm glad you like your shirt though. It's still just a block in. Um, let me see. What I'm gonna do now is select the color and then inverse and then erase some parts of the background. Mostly the areas that, uh, because I don't want the background to have that many shadows. And then when I deselect, yeah, it's still a little dark, so I'm going to get rid of that. Oh no, I got rid of the shadows on my grass. I didn't want to do that. Let me try that again. Let me just get rid of all the shadows on the, on the background, because I don't want it, actually. And then there we go. And that's how I block in my shadows. I have about a couple minutes left. So what I would do next is if I have any areas that really need like uh, secondary shadows, like more intense shadows, I will go in here and then add that in. Hi Emma, Emma popping in with less than 10 minutes, let's go. <laughs> Bluish gloss to look like the color of the sky is bouncing off. Um, you make it sound like I, I put lots of thought into this, so thank you, M. But no, that's not what, what I did. I, I actually chose a random color. Um, thank you for making me look smart, though. <laughs> but yeah, you can do that. What I also do is I also like adding... This is more of a finishing touch, but I add uh, rim lighting to my drawings. And then what I would do is add like blue, blue and yellow lights. Usually yellow to represent the uh, sunlight. That we can kind of see here and then blue on the other side to represent the sky that's really purple uh, i was skin tones let me see i'm gonna switch back to the g pen i'm gonna knock back the uh saturation as well so it's usually areas like under the eyebrow where I like to focus extra or secondary shadows that I may have erased or that I need to be in a different color. Because it also plays a role when I'm rendering because when I'm rendering things like skin, I don't wanna be shading with only uh, two different colors. I want like a range of colors. Like I can add a bit of shadow here for his neck, collarbone, and then under under the eyes. Howl is a really pretty character. I like rendering eye bags and stuff on my character, so uh, but I won't give him that because that'll kind of ruin his image. Let's see where else I can intensify the shadows. So like here, I could also put this arm here in a, in a light desaturated blue to represent the uh, like fading into the sky background. And any other shadows there. Shadow for her skirt. If I look at the reference, the foreground is above them, so they wouldn't be casting a shadow. Because this is kind of like, this is the foreground. And again, any secondary shadows. I don't want that. That was a mistake. There we go. Your brain can't comprehend. Um, 
Is there a certain part that you'd like me to repeat? I know I'm kind of just like skimming over all of my steps, but I do want um, you guys to take away some uh, helpful bits of information here and there. Hi, Vanya. This is so cool. Thank you. Glad you could join. Although we, uh, I don't think I'm, I'm going to continue for too much longer. I'll render, hmm. I will have to finish this in my own time, but I will add in some highlights. I'll show you guys like what I what I would usually do for a finishing touch is uh, some some rim lighting. I would actually render first and then add rim lighting, but if I were to have some light on the edge. This is actually um, if your character is lit from the back, like backlighting. But at the same time, it also helps separate separate um, elements of your drawing. So in my case, a character, it separates him from the background more. She needs a little light in her eyes. She looks so soulless. <laughs> So that's what I would do. Don't worry, it's Friday. You don't know what's happening in life. That's okay. Well, that's why you're able to just uh, join and hang out and chill with us, right? You can watch Head Empty. That's fine, too. <laughs> like, the idea behind this stream is that you guys could also draw along with me, but if you just want to watch... That's totally fine too. And some blue to represent the sky. And again, just to break up some shapes like his leg from his arm. And again, that is more like a finishing touch. I'll do just a little bit of rendering. <laughs> so what I would do is select everything, put them in a folder, copy paste that folder, and then boom, everything is on one layer. I'll just do a little bit for his face. So I would, I could use acrylic or I could use watercolor. I could also use the G pen. It doesn't matter what I want to use, actually. So what I would do is start by darkening up this area to kind of make his eyes stand out more. And then I like having a bit of the uh, tear duct showing. I could also darken his eyelid a little bit. I find that when I'm working with skin tones, I like to keep um, the lines that I'm adding in more saturated. And then let's see, maybe I'll go for another five minutes and then see what I can render in five minutes. His nose. And again, I'm kind of torn because I don't really like this whole open mouth look. I might give him some teeth. Personal preference. So I just uh, color pick the whites of his eyes and added in some teeth. And I like that a lot better. 
So I'm glad I decided to make that change. I can darken areas like his mouth and then add in shadows like the corners of his mouth because he's smiling and his cheeks are raised. I also add in a little bit of a shadow for the top lip. Try not to zoom in too much. Oh, that's really purple. Trying to add like a shadow for the bridge of his nose. And then I'm color picking his skin and then I'm color picking the shadow and then I'm kind of beating, beating the painting into shape. I think that's how, that's the best way to describe rendering. You're kind of just like pushing things around. Oops, I don't want that. Okay, I'll just add a little bit of his nose over here on the side. And then I'll continue to work on this a bit more, but yeah, let me turn off the reference layer. And then Oh, you can see the before and after of a little bit of rendering. So that's before, after, before, after. I might make his eyes a little bit smaller, but uh, we will get to that. And I accidentally put this on the slayer. I'm just gonna get rid of that if I can. There we go. Fine, that's fine. But yeah, I'm gonna end it here for today. Um, Again, if you want to see the finished result, I will most likely post it to Discord. Um, so yeah, feel free to join us there. Thank you so much for joining me today, for joining us today, and we will see you guys next week. Have a nice one. Bye.